Let's add a block entity renderer to our basic block entity. Even more topics available in the 121 Minecraft modding courses, now with energy and fluid handling for block entities next to many other awesome topics. All right, we're back and tell you once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding a block entity renderer to our pedestal block entity. Last time, we have added the basic block entity, which is going to be the pedestal, and we were able to right-click it and basically add one item to it, right, to the inventory over here, and we were also able to retrieve it. However, that only happened with a, well, a simple sound and no visuals whatsoever. Now, visuals, yeah, they're kind of important. That's why we're going to add a block entity renderer. So a block entity renderer basically as a high level overview allows you to render something for a block entity. Crazy enough that the that the name almost suggests what it does, but let's just take a look. In the block entity package, we're going to right click new package called renderer and inside of there we'll make the pedestal block entity renderer class. There we go. This will implement the block entity renderer interface of type pedestal block entity. There we go. We'll hover over this to to implement the render method and then we'll make a constructor and then we'll see what we need. So the constructor is going to be public pedestal block entity renderer and the constructor parameter is going to be the block entity renderer provider dot context. I'm going to call this context and we don't need to do anything with it. That's going to be fine. And now the render method. Now here I'll copy over the contents of this and then we'll see what we need. One thing that we're not going to have is one method in the block entity, which we'll need to, well, add to the block entity in a second, but you'll find that, well, I basically will explain everything and then we'll see. First of all, in the render method, I want to rename a couple of the um, parameters over here just because I don't like the way that they, uh, you know, like a V over here. No, that's P partial tick. I believe that's just because of the version of parchment that I'm running. Uh, I think that in newer versions, this has been resolved or like it, you know, basically has different names, the buffer source. And then lastly, the I here is P packed light. And then this one, I one is P packed overlay, just so that we have this a little bit nicer in terms of the names. Uh, and then we're going to copy over the contents of this. We're going to have two errors over here, but once again, I will fix those and I'll explain all of the rest over here. This is the P post stack, not post stack. Very funny, but there you go. So number one is a get light level method. Well, that one we can actually just create within the block entity renderer class itself. That one, highest level overview, it just basically calculates whatever light level we have so that whatever we display gets sort of displayed properly. And then you can see one thing is the get rendering rotation from the block entity itself. So for that, we need to go back to our block entity over here and just add this. Now, this is super simple. We're simply going to add a private float called rotation, and this is going to just be there. And then we have the get rendering rotation method, which looks like this. It is super simple. The idea is that I want the, uh, the item, obviously, for our um, pedestal is going to be displayed on top of the pedestal. And I want it to rotate a little bit, and that is what this does, right? So basically, we have a rotation, and every time we call the get rendering rotation method, we increase this rotation by 0.5. And if it reaches 360 or more, we're resetting it to zero. So basically, it's going to continuously rotate around. And then if we go to the render method, we can actually go through this step by step. The idea is as follows. We have an item renderer, right? So we're just getting the item renderer from the Minecraft client. And we're saying, okay, the stack that we want to render is from the inventory, you know, get stack in slot zero. Fair enough. Then we're pushing to the post stack. The highest level idea is that we're basically saying, hey, we want to render something and whatever we want to render, we can translate this. So basically we can change the position of it. We can change the scale of it. And then here, mold position is we're rotating it. Now, when you rotate something, you need uh, for a rotation, you need a quaternion. Now, this is a little bit higher level math over here. Uh, the idea is as follows. When you have a rotation, you can't do it with three um, dimensions, right? You can't just say rotation has X, Y, and Z rotations. You actually need four, a four dimensional number, which is called a quaternion. A highest level overview here is you basically choose an axis that you want to rotate around. In this case, you want to rotate around the positive Y axis, and then we can actually put in what, however many degrees we want to rotate. That's why our rendering rotation over here is 
goes goes from zero to three hundred and sixty because that's just going to be you know a circle, right? Once one uh, rotating around, and we're going to rotate around the positive y direction. Then, as you can see, we're using the item renderer to render the stack over here, and finally, we're popping the post stack, basically meaning that. We now want to render everything that we've defined over here. What I highly recommend you do is you just play around with this, right? So get it to work once and then play around with a couple of these numbers and then just see what the frick happens, right? Let's say, for example, uh, turn it in and say you want to now rotate around the negative X axis or something like that. Just change a bunch of these numbers, play around with this a little bit, see what you can else you can call on the post stack. You can see there's um, a not that many different things. So you can rotate around something. Obviously, that's a little more complicated. And otherwise, you pretty much just have the translation and the scaling. So you can, of course, also change a bit of the scaling, things like that. Highly recommend to try it out and just see what the freaking can come up with. When you have a block entity renderer, you, of course, then also need to, well, somehow connect it to, uh, to the block entity itself. And the way to do this is in the tutorial mod class all the way down in our client mod events right here. What we're going to have is a new method. And that's going to be public static void register ber. This is going to be the entity renderers event dot register renderers event over here. Of course, as per usual, it needs the add subscribe event annotation. Very important. And then here we're going to say event dot register block entity renderers passing in mod block entities dot pedestal be dot get and then the second parameter is the pedestal block entity renderer colon colon new and that combines the pedestal block entity with the pedestal block entity renderer and registers all of that together nice crazy enough this should be everything that we need in order for the pedestal to now also look visually absolutely stunning so let's remember the game and see if it works all right finds it back in minecraft and as you can see look at this i mean come on man that is so freaking cool and we can now, well, basically do whatever we so choose. So we can remove the items. We can put them in there. We can even put the pedestal inside of the pedestal, which is a little bit of a pedestalception over here. But yeah, you can see I can put whatever item I want to in here and it just works. And just having this displayed, I mean, that adds so much to the pedestal is actually freaking crazy, isn't it? Like that just is so awesome. And that's a basic block entity renderer added to a basic block entity. As per usual, of course, all of the code is available to you down below in the description in the GitHub repository. But that's going to be it for this tutorial right here. Next time in this video, we'll add a menu and a screen to this block entity as well. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.